What's going on guys? Jace Two Cents here bringing you another video here on the tech channel about, well, tech. Because that's what we do here. At least that's what I try and do. Now when I built Skunk Works a few months back, a lot of people recognized and kind of called out the fact that I just sort of glossed right over the hard drives and I didn't really mention the hard drives when it came to Skunk Works. And the reality is, the storage situation on my main rig is pretty atrocious, to say the least. Now just to answer some questions here about what hard drives I'm currently running, guys, I'm telling you right now, it's disappointing. In fact, I'm probably gonna lose some community respect with what went in there because I'm not running any RAIDs or anything like that. In fact, I've got two SSDs, a 256 Adata SX900, which I will be replacing with a Samsung 840 Evo, a 500 gigabyte uh, pretty soon here, a Plextor 256 gigabyte, that's the M5. I am running a two terabyte Toshiba drive and a one terabyte Toshiba drive, uh, and that's it. And as you, as you can probably imagine, I'm running out of space very fast when it comes to the amount of storage I need to bring you guys this lovely HD content. In fact, on average, a 10 minute video takes about 35 gigabytes of raw footage. We're talking about the B-roll and all the outtakes and that sort of stuff, about 35 gigabytes per video. And considering I have over 400 videos, you can do the math on how bad my storage situation is. So recently I was uh, contacted by Western Digital and they said, hey Jay, we love the channel, we love the content, is there anything we can do for you? And it was all of a sudden like the clouds opened and everything just... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Western Digital said, yeah, man, we got you covered. We'll go ahead and send you one of the MyCloud EX2 NAS servers. It is a network accessible storage and it's got its own processor and it's actually pretty cool. Now this is the four terabyte version. It's got two two terabyte Western digital reds in there and it's got its own software. You can access it from iPad or Android or iOS devices, from other computers, uh, from obviously your main computer and it's pretty neat. It has its own software. You can do RAID configs and whatnot. So we're gonna go ahead and crack this bad boy open, take a quick look at it and then we're gonna set it up and see if it's really as plug and play as they claim that it is. Now when you first open up the box right on the top there's a concierge service card here with a 800 number or 855 number right on top to give you some support if you need it you have your actual nas drive right here let's just upside down it's actually packed in there pretty tightly so we've got a box of accessories and we've got the nas itself now as you can see the nas it's pretty small in fact it looks bigger on the box this is it right here it's pretty damn small uh, I, it looks really nice, actually. It's, it's almost like a gunmetal-y color. Hell, it even matches Skunk Works. That's pretty awesome. Um, right on the top, you can see you have got your plug-and-play storage uh, hard drives on there. I'm sorry, your hot swap drives on there. I'm going to go ahead and leave these in there for now because I haven't read the manual. But two two terabyte Western Digital Reds. Pretty awesome, if you ask me. And then I'm assuming this is probably going to have maybe a Cat5 or a Cat6 and some power. Yep, there we go. We got a power brick right here. And we have got our ethernet cable right here. So that's it, that's all that's in the box. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this thing in now and we will see just how easily this thing is set up on the network and we'll start archiving some data. Although you guys won't get to be a part of that because I take data security very serious. Serious business. Transition. Well guys, I gotta say that the Western Digital MyCloud EX2 is very, very simple to use. In fact, I've been playing around with it for a while now, uh, which is why the sudden wardrobe change, because I, I was like, oh, I forgot to record the last part of the video because I got so involved in setting up the NAS and I was having so much fun with that. RAID setup is very easy. You can do JBOD, you can do striped, you can, or RAID 0, RAID 1, you can do spanned. And I went ahead and moved it from a RAID 0, which it came pre-set up as a RAID 0, into a span setup. Now, I don't need the super fast transfer rate of a RAID, and I don't need the redundancy of a RAID because I'm not actually using that as my operating system drives, obviously. I actually want as much storage as I possibly can since it really is going to be nothing more than storage and archiving of my YouTube videos and a lot of my raw content that I use when I do my editing. So I want all four terabytes available 
default to me, not two terabytes in a RAID setup. But you can set up multiple users, you can allocate which parts of the hard drive are theirs, give them access to certain files, you have shared files which are public, and it's really cool. So if you wanna give different file folders uh, availability to different users in your family or maybe your office, they, you can even lock them down to only having access to the folders that you give them access to. So it's very neat. Uh, there's actual data encryption on there, there's automatic backups, there's even automatic uh, like HTTP file fetching on there so that if you're constantly pulling down files or something for work, you can even set a timer on there where it will go to these uh, HTTP settings with these usernames and you can actually set it up to go and fetch files and download them automatically. You can hook up USB storage devices to this so that you have some more redundancy when it comes to file backups and uh, there's just so much flexibility in this. It's more than just a network accessible storage. It is really a mini server that is just accessed on your storage. It's so much more than just a basic NAS. It's got full functionality. The dashboard is easy to use. It's very intuitive. Updating the software is very simple. In fact, I needed a firmware update. All I did was click one button and off it went. It did everything by itself. So guys, if you're looking for having a very simple NAS solution, you've got to consider looking at the MyCloud from Western Digital. I mean, guys, that's what Western Digital does. This is what they do. This is their thing. Storage. I loved everything about the software. In fact, there's not one thing I found in this software that it can't do that I wish it did. In fact, actually, there's one thing, and it might even be able to do it. I just haven't found a way to do it if there is a way. I, if there's a way to set up users to where they have access to their own folders, but if you could limit the amount of access they can have to the NAS in terms of storage, you could say user A only gets 200 gigabytes of storage and user 3 gets 100 gigabytes, whatever. That would be really cool. I haven't found a way to do it. It might be possible, but I recommend heading on over to the Western Digital website uh, or look down in the description. You can find some Amazon links if you guys are interested in purchasing this drive for purchasing this drive for yourself or somebody else. So guys, thanks for watching this video. Go ahead and head on over to Facebook or Twitter if you have any questions. It's the best place to get a hold of me. As always, guys, I really, really appreciate your views. It helps this channel a whole bunch. You guys have no idea where this channel would be right now if it wasn't for you guys. Actually, I do. It would be absolutely nowhere. And I've got you guys to thank for the success of this channel. So as always, guys, I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.